fed it up until now, but we'll do so, we'll look at this now. This is the key point, I think, really, is that if we understand there's a relationship between the amount of force we can generate and the time we have to generate it. If you have more time, say you have 0.5 of a second, half a second, you can develop pretty much your maximal level of strength. Yeah, so if you've got a power lifter, squat, deadlift, bench press, massive heavy weights. They have as long as they want to apply that to the bar. There's no time limit, slow but bar movement, so they can get to their physical limit. So you could be a big squatter, massive heavy squatter, and get to this huge weight. But how much time do we have contact time in sprinting? 0.1 of a second, exactly. 0.1 of a second. In 0.1 of a second, if this is five seconds, if this is 0.5 of a second over here, which athlete's stronger? Athlete B can squat more weight, perhaps. But if I've got 0.1 of a second, athlete A is stronger. We don't give a shit that athlete B can, can, can squat more weight, deadlift more weight. Who cares? You haven't got that much time to express it on the track. You've got 0.1 of a second to express it on the track. So we, we'd rather be athlete A. We'd rather have a lesser maximal squat but be able to bring on more force as quickly as possible. The way to look at it is this, is the way I'm lifting a bar, explosively in weightlifting. I've got this point here where I'm at my absolute position of mechanical efficiency. This is where I can generate as much force as quickly as possible. And all I'm trying to do when I explode through to here is give that bar as much momentum as possible to allow it to give it a bit of hang time for me to get underneath it and catch it. Now that sounds completely irrelevant for sprinting, but it's not when you think about it. In sprinting, what you do, when you've got 0.1 of a second, to strike the floor, apply as much force to the floor as quickly as possible to drive you forward. Because the second you leave the floor, you can't apply any more force to the floor. So if you've got 0.1 of a second, if, I, if you can train to apply 20% more force in that 0.1 of a second, you're going to go 20% further forward. You're going to go 20% quicker. That's the, that's the key point. The two are very similar. When we're sprinting, we've got 0.1 of a second to drive ourselves forward. In weightlifting, I've got probably less than 0.1 of a second to give that bar momentum. You're trying to give your body momentum, I'm trying to give your bar momentum. The end result is exactly the same. That's, that's really the key point. Rate of force development is what this is all about. So your squats are important because Obviously, athlete A still needed to have a high level of strength because it's, it's, you know, it's fantastic having a high rate of force development, but if his curve is down here, it doesn't matter. Yeah, he can get force on quickly, but he can't get very much force on quickly. You need a combination of pure force and rate of getting it on as well. So that's why we do need to squat. You know, We do need to do deadlifts and this kind of stuff to get that. But then what we need to do is ensure that we make it turn it into quick, into quick strength by doing the explosive stuff. So various versions, um, full squat, uh, clean and snatch, the ones we saw in the videos, split jerk, um, power clean and snatch, power jerk, um, then we've got split clean snatch as well. Power clean and snatch is probably what you guys have been doing, what we saw Will Sharman doing before. Um, split clean and snatch, Underused. Mm -hmm. See the guy in the background doing it. Really we'll talk about split techniques in a second. Feet end up in a similar position to the jerk. But an underutilized variant, and we'll explain why in a second. And then you've got clean and snatch from the hand. So rather than worrying about the bit from the floor, which is you know, it's important, but when you're learning not so much. We're just going to clean from snap from this position, straight from there, straight into our explosion, rather than taking it from the floor and accelerating. So we've got our hang position as well. Then we've got things like pulls. So rather than completing the lift and catching it, we can just start from here or start from the floor, jump and shrug, get the extension. Of course, we lack the we lose the triple flexion, and we also lose the, the training for the reactive stuff. It would be like doing plyometrics and just jumping and never landing it. Both are important. Jump squats. I would say jump squats are probably the, if you've got very, very limited time with an athlete, you want to get the biggest overload as quickly as possible, jump squat is the best exercise. Bar on the shoulders, drop, jump and land. You can also do stuff like um, start low, start here, and just explode up. 
Because when you sprint out the blocks, you haven't got time to rock back and come out again. You've just got to go straight forward. So if we're doing jump squats all the time, drop, jump, that doesn't really teach us to be explosive out the blocks. That teaches us to counter movement. So we can do jump squats from different positions. Um, overhead throwing as well, really useful. Power bags, um, sandbags, explosive implements overhead. When we're talking about how deep we drop, when are we going to snap? When are we going to clean? Are we going to power, a power snap, power, a full depth snap? Key concepts, the snatch is going to always have to be pulled higher than the clean. That makes sense. It's got to end up here rather than here. The power versions always have to be pulled higher than a, a full depth version. If I'm doing a power clean, I've got to get the bar to here. If I'm doing a, a depth clean, I've only got to get the bar to about here and then dive underneath. Split versions kind of in the middle of the two. Obviously, small, full squat versions of the clap, snatch and the clean are catching the lowest. And then when you're doing pulls, they don't get very high at all. But the key point of that is that that allows us to choose to handle more or less weight. If I'm doing a pull just to here, I'm trying to handle massive weight. So then it becomes like a, a slow power. If I'm doing a, a power snatch, that's got to be the highest position. I can, I've got to handle the least weight. It's a much more explosive type of power. In sport, we call that type of thing speed strength. The more very slow power is strength speed. We're going to use different types of those, different types of times in the training year. Off season, we may look to develop more strength speed, slow explosive stuff, closer and closer to races. We may go more speed strength. We might full snatch at that point. So we can manipulate. We can use snatches, cleans. We can use full full depth, um, power versions, split versions to dictate how much weight we use. What we can't really say is, I'm going to power clean. 100 kilos today, or I'm going to power clean 60 kilos next week, and 60 is going to be quicker. The problem, the problem with that is we're not going to extend the 60. If you've got the strength and the power to pull 100 kilos to here, when you pull 60 kilos to here, you're not going to fully extend. You're not going to attack it hard. So it would be a bit like doing plyometric training and saying, just half jump today. Instead of doing your full plyometrics, I just want you to go. You'd never do it. It would make no sense. We would be attacking that full, full, you know, full velocity, full force. Um, split positions, underestimated, very relevant to your control patterns that you require in sprinting, um, very relevant to, the, to your split nature of, of sprinting. What does the groin mean? Just in terms, in terms of groin, groin stability, groin strength, groin control. The positions are very, very similar. Jerk, obviously there we saw a snatch before. You know, we see here, both are airborne in a very similar position. So we can see the relevance, hopefully, of split positions and why they could be useful to us in sprinting. Key misconceptions, um, the arms pull the bar upright, upward and upright row fashion. You see this all the time in, in coaching manuals, it'll go right, get to here, and then do an upright row with the bar. It's not true. The arms. We should be thinking about the arms pulling us underneath. So when we get to here, we extend to here, the bar's got momentum, and we just use that to come underneath. The arms shouldn't be bending until literally the last second. The arms just get us under the bar. They don't, they don't attack the bar. So it's not, it's, not really, it's not like a clean then? It's not like... I mean, a, clean, a, a clean or snatch, either lift, either lift. And what I mean is the, the, the split. Is it the clean movement? Yeah, it's exactly the same, oh, yeah. It's, the same it's exactly the same, but this, is, this stuff is literally just about every lift, any okay. type of lift. Okay. Um, we shouldn't be thinking about upright rowing the bar, yeah. because then we start lifting with the arms. The arms are pretty useless to us, especially in sport. Um, it's about exploding, getting as much force on as quickly as possible out of our you know, hamstrings, arse, back and so forth, and then we just use the arms to position us around the bar. Don't think about lifting with the arms, you'll start to bend the arms too early and you'll, you'll, you'll waste force, you'll lose force. 